This video was made in association with KnifeInformer.com. Head on over to Knife Informer for all of your blade-related needs, including reviews, comparisons, stats, and more. What is up, everybody, and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Reich Knife Hummingbird. Now, this knife is extraordinary, and I feel like, um, you know, 99% of people who purchase this knife, including myself, purchase it as a novelty or they expect it to be a novelty and while in many ways it still is a novelty uh it must be said that this knife is extraordinarily effective as in everyday carry um as weird as it is to say that so i'm really excited to talk to you guys about my experience with the knife um and how it might be like a beneficial purchase to you as like an actual tool and not just a toy so Let's go ahead and jump in here. Of course, before we start talking about the features and flaws, we're gonna take a look at some statistics, starting with the overall length. Now, I actually do have an even smaller ruler than normal to get the overall length of this guy. Uh, so we are looking at four inches, uh, just about exactly four inches, including this little uh, lanyard hole here. If we don't include the lanyard piece, it's about 3.9 inches or so. Um, so you can definitely see it's a super small knife. I think this one might even be worth showing you guys what the overall length is closed. Uh, so including that little lanyard here, we're looking at under two and a half inches. Okay, so it is a super, super dinky knife. That's what it looks like in my hand. Let's go ahead and get a size comparison working as well. Uh, I think it'll be, you know, really valuable to, to see what that looks like. So uh, there's the PM2 closed. <laughs> uh, and this uh, RAT2, I think, will be helpful. So, you know, normally uh, we take a look at the PM2 and we take a look at the RAT2. Uh, and it's interesting because the RAT2 compared to the Reich uh, is actually substantially you know, larger overall than the PM2 is compared to the RAT2, which I find to be really interesting because, I mean, you know, typically you'd think the RAT2 is a substantially smaller knife than the PM2, but really the ratio here, uh, the Reich knife <laughs> completely uh, takes the cake in terms of tininess. So uh, let's go ahead and see how that weight um, or how that size stacks up against the weight because I think it's really important here to uh, show you guys how little this will actually be noticeable like in your pocket or around your neck or however you decide to carry it. Um, it's like crazy tiny and crazy light. So let's go ahead and take a look at the weight. So I am going to guess that it's like, I don't know man, like one and a half ounces. I'm not really sure or half an ounce. <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, it's, it's super light. So, um, you guys can see it just about half an ounce, right? Um, it's, it's a super, super small knife. You are not going to notice this thing on your person at all. So sort of adding it to your everyday carry, uh, as I typically do as like a supplemental knife. Um, you know, you're not going to notice any difference uh, in the way that you feel. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws on this one. So I've had this knife for, goodness, I don't know. It's been like over two months now, I think. I've carried it quite a bit. Uh, I've used it a few times. So when we go ahead and look at the sort of material showcase that I'm about to go over with you guys, do bear in mind that if you see any little um, scratches in the steel etch or uh, any gunk inside the handle of the knife or anything like that, um, just know that when it came um, brand new, I bought it brand new. When it came, it was super clean and they just did a really great job on executing all of the finishing work and everything on the knife. So uh, if you see any little stuff like that, just know that that was caused by me um, and that that's not sort of like a side effect of, of it being such a small knife that they manufactured here. So let's get it cleaned up a bit. Um, to be able to make sure that this f uh, little overview is in focus, I'm going to go ahead and stand up so I can get a good visual of what you guys are seeing on the camera. Make sure that all of this is in focus. So we do have a Damasteel blade. 
You can see the etch is kind of gray more than black. It's not super deep. But it is polished quite well. You can see the reflection of, there's my eyeball and everything in the camera. And you can see they really like did work here. I mean, you've got this little flute coming right out of the hole here. It's pretty intricate. You can see there's a flat bevel here as well. So uh, you have the hole and then you have this flute and then there's this flat bevel going all the way through here up uh, making contact right here. And then you have the primary bevel of course. They've even done some almost quaken shaping through the blade here. If we take a look at the handle, full titanium construction. They've done gorgeous internal milling. That's not, not I don't mean like, um, you know, cutouts for weight, which they obviously have on the, the skeletonized show side. But I mean, you see this tiny pattern inside uh, on the... Um, lock side innards. They've machined like a little pattern. It's also on the presentation side. You can see there's a mill pattern through the entirety of the frame. It's really impressive. Um, and that's how they sort of get this two-tone sheen with the anodization. You can see here that it's sort of blue and then purple. Um, and part of that is like hand oils and stuff, but you can see that actually is due to sort of being able to see two sides to that milling. Of course, this gorgeous milling all through here. The patterns that they've done, the skeletonizing, everything's incredibly smoothed out. I mean, they just crushed it with this knife. You can buy these brand new right now on, I think, Moose and Bear for only 90 bucks. I mean, that's a freaking steal. This knife is incredibly well manufactured. Take a look at the lock side here. We still have the milling pattern. We have this cool clip, 3D milled clip. All these edges are fully contoured. And it is a super tiny frame lock. You can see here's our relief cut. And we actually do have a stainless steel lock bar insert with an over travel stop, as you can see if you look closely. So, all of the normal things you'd expect from a knife of this caliber, and we of course are running on bearings as well. There's like maybe six bearing balls per side, based on what I've counted just by kind of looking in there. I haven't taken it apart. I don't really want to. You can see the centering's perfect. Well, slightly to the right, but that uh, honestly just looks like the blade grind more than the actual centering, because up here the centering's perfect. So yeah, you guys can see, um, as far as a showcase knife, it's actually really freaking gorgeous. And they took the time to make sure that when you look at it on a super small scale, um, you know, it still sort of comes to life and is still really well made. So I'm just super impressed with this little thing. It's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the ergonomics. Now, ergonomics in a traditional sense, not traditional sense, uh, not exactly applicable here. Um, obviously, you can sort of saber grip it if you want. You do get two full fingers around here. Uh, your index finger actually does fit quite nicely into this uh, area here. And then your middle finger is just kind of left to curl around. Um, and remarkably, your thumb does kind of end up on this jimping. Now, uh, the jimping's just three little nubs. Oh, sorry, I was off frame there, my bad. You can see the jimping's just three little nubs, but it works. I mean, it doesn't really keep you from slipping, but uh, it is where your thumb ends up. So technically, if you wanted to saw through a piece of rope or something with this thing, you freaking could, which is amazing to me. I just love how functional they made this tidy little knife. It's hilarious. But uh, yeah, if you really wanted to kind of saw cut through something uh, with this grip, you really could. But um, let's be honest, most of you, if you are cutting with this knife, you're going to be using a pinch grip. Now, what they've done is they've actually made it to where 
you hold it more like a pen almost. So like if you pinch grip normally, your middle finger is kind of right in here, which is good. And then you're basically just creating a, a little uh, reverse pressure cavity where like these two fingers are pulling the knife this way and your index finger is pushing the knife this way. And so it kind of evens out and feels good in your hand. The uh, back end here just kind of ends up right in this area of your hand, which is kind of like a weird place for it to be. Um, but ultimately, you kind of have the the feeling of like a pen in your hand more than anything else. And so you can like really get some like detailed cutting. Like I could cut fruit with this, um, you know, assuming the fruit was not too large for the blade to handle. Um, but like I could like use this to do stuff. And so typically it's this sort of like pinky out thing that I have going on here, but you know, like I can open a package, um, I can easily cut into stuff, and ultimately it's pretty effective, right? It's not the most effective way to hold a knife, it is still super small, um, but they've, they've done a remarkably good job of making sure that the ergonomics function on this knife, and that you can get purchase on it if you actually want to use it. So let's go ahead and jump into the next section, which is of course the action broken into two main subjects. First is deployment, second being the closing. As far as deployment is uh, concerned on this knife, it's a tiny little rocket. It's got a great detent um, and the flipper tab functions pretty well. It's got these two little bits of jimping. It is super tiny, so you really have to um, get purchase, but it's interesting because you can actually put your finger up on this area of the knife and then just essentially pull down and it becomes really easy to deploy consistently. You can see uh, all I'm really doing is light switching, which uh, you know re definitely requires a strong detent to be able to light switch such a small uh, knife. But it's really effective. I mean, you guys can see it really consistently deploys. Um, so that's pretty cute that it functions like that. Uh, you get great lockup. Uh, again, it's really consistent. It's snappy. It's pretty quick. Um, in terms of closing, it is a manual closer, even though it does have those, I don't know, five, six, seven bearing balls on either side. Um, you, it, It's damn of steel, and I'm sure they didn't really polish that interior. Um, and it is a rather strong, because the detent's so strong to get that good... Uh, deployment, you know, they, I, I didn't expect this to have a good closing action. I don't think you should either. Um, but I mean, it is smooth, you know, you can close it. It's super easy. Just, just requires, you know, a little bit of a uh, manual action there, but still super smooth, super easy. And when it clicks into place is super satisfying, very snappy detent on it is just fantastic fantastic um as far as the blade is concerned we are of course looking at damasteel very light etch as i mentioned before um in terms of the shape it's kind of like a funky drop point um from like here forward it's a drop point but back here it's got this kind of interesting shape to it uh I don't know. It's designed to look like a hummingbird. It looks like the beak of a hummingbird. I'm going to call it a hummingbird blade shape. You guys can correct me in the comments down below if you're, you know, super into classifying blade shapes or whatever. Um, but, you know, we it, the whole thing is belly, um, and it does come to a nice sharp point. Frankly, this thing has been great for opening boxes um, and, like, cutting little stuff. I like to pull it out. You know, if I have, like, a little thread on my clothes or something, I can um, cut it with this knife. It came super sharp out of the box. I was actually cutting paper right out of the box. Um, I might actually – I didn't really prepare for this. But I think I have, like, a sticky note here. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding, right? Normally I don't do cutting tests on the channel. It's not really something I'm uh, into, but I mean, I got to prove a point, right? This thing has already cut through a ton of paper and boxes and stuff, and you can see it's still sharp. I've never sharpened it. And post-it notes are uh, a little bit thicker than copier paper. Um, so you can see it, it functions great. Uh, I absolutely love this thing. Let me clean off the edge here. Uh, and yeah, it's just it's just surprisingly good. So the uh, other function and feature of this knife that I skipped um, is the clip, and I sort of wanted to save the best for last. The clip on this knife is probably the most remarkable feature about it um, in terms of functionality. 
I think anybody sees this tiny little clip and it's just a, it's like, why did you even put the clip on there? That's sort of the question that I want to be asking Reg Knife, um, or that I thought anyway, when I first obtained the knife. My plan was always to carry it using this. It comes with this little uh, Kydex sheath, which, uh, let's see, which way is it? Which functions really great. Um, you can see it's not going anywhere. Uh, and this is still how I carry it. I like to generally put this between like my shirt and my sweater in the winter. Uh, and I just put this little Kydex around my neck. Uh, every single one comes with this one if you buy it new or if it comes with all the stuff. Uh, but you can absolutely use this knife as a normal carry with the clip. It is a 3D mill titanium clip. And, uh, you know, when I got the knife and I tried the clip out, I told myself like, wow, that functions really well. Um, I'm really impressed by that, but uh, another friend of mine actually picked up the knife recently, and unprovoked, I hadn't mentioned uh, that to him before, he said the same thing to me. He was like, dude, the clip, like, works, like, better than clips on some of my full-size knives, and uh, I was like, yeah, man, okay, cool, I feel validated, so um, I do feel comfortable saying to you guys that, like, this clip is better than it is on certain knives, um, it literally like slides right out of the pocket. It's got great retention. Um, it clips onto your pants like really well and really easily. Uh, sort of two-handed just to so you don't fumble with it. Um, but like not difficult to push into the pocket at all and functions really well. So I guess the overall point that I'm trying to make about this knife is that it's incredibly efficient as a knife. It's going to cut paper. It can cut, um, you know, something like a banana or something, as long as it's not like a huge apple uh, where the where the blade's too short. It can cut uh, through little strings that you have. It can it can, you know, open your envelopes and and do all kinds of little stuff. And you can keep it in your pocket just like a regular carry. Uh, you can deploy the knife, you know, almost just like a fidgeter. Uh, it's really fun to just kind of sit and play with. And you can stare at it and take beautiful pictures of it because it's so incredibly well finished. I just have to say that for the price um, and for the fact that it appears to be a novelty at first, this knife is incredibly effective. Um, I think everybody should have one of these in their collection, to be perfectly frank. Um, I had no expectation or intention of being nearly this impressed by the knife. I honestly expected to buy it, take a few pictures of it, and then sell it so that I could use the money for something else. Um, but this knife's not going anywhere because it's so freaking and sweet. Uh, they come in a bunch of different colors. You've got this bluish purple. There's a green one. There's a rose gold one. There's a plain titanium one. Um, and hopefully they are successful with sales of this knife and make a version two and, uh, you know, come out with different colors and everything and, and newer designs. Um, so thanks so much for watching guys. Of course, if you'd like to see beautiful pictures of this knife or any of the other knives around the table, you can do so by following me on Instagram at Tovarish Works. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason whatsoever, be it sending loaners or asking questions, or you just want to chat, you can do so by emailing me at tovarishworks at gmail.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.